going on everybody this is pat that's ray welcome to jetcast so thursday last thursday really sucked um it was really hard to watch it over the tv ray i know you were actually in the stadium and that uh freezing rainstorm what was it like seeing um trevor lawrence and and zach wilson up close and personal you could clearly see uh the confidence level is completely, you know, night and day between the two mm-hmm. players. Without a doubt, uh, Trevor's just got, you know, a better handle of his offense. He looks confident. He knows where he wants to go. You see him go through his progressions, one, two, three. Uh, the Jets threw a bunch of different defenses at him. One in doubt, he tucked it and ran, which, uh, you know, I know Jet fans, including myself, have been begging for Zach to do for a while now. It was just... You know, the, the Jaguars played, I would say, single high safety about 90% of the plays, saying that, you know, Zach's going to have to beat us deep and make sharp, precise window throws. And, uh, you know, dared him to make those throws. And as we've known for a while, Zach has struggled to make those throws. And uh, it showed in the box score. I mean, the defense got that strip sack early on with Quinn and Williams. Uh, they technically put those three points up in my mind because the next tr- that first drive that we had, we went minus one yard. Uh, with the offense. So just, you know, unacceptable all around, not even competitive. It was cold as hell out and made that three hour drive home feel like it was five or six hours. But hey, we're moving on to this week against the Seahawks. Yeah. Zach in the offense is really has really put the defense in a, in a tough spot. Um, a lot of people are talking about the how in their opinion, how poorly the defense has been playing, but I completely disagree. I mean, they're doing the best they can. They're holding teams to, to you know, 20 points and less consistently, and, and and we're losing these games, which is just completely unacceptable. When, when the uh, time of possession is so lopsided, um, the fact that they're even able to hang on the way they are late in these games is is a testament to, to the coaching and – and their and the defense is conditioning to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. Um, you know he's he's clearly not an NFL quarterback right now. I think Steve Young actually was just talking about it this afternoon. I saw some tweets where he's, you know, he was a proponent of you know he's got to play, he's got to get more time, but you know he's he's realized that he is he just cannot play right now. You know when you when you bench someone. Um, they're not going to be able to get those reps in, um, you know, to work on their footwork and, and work on the little things they need to do to get better. Um, and unfortunately, with Mike White going down, he had to get thrown right back in there. Um, I do you think do you think we've seen the last uh, game that barring injury uh, that Zach plays for the Jets? It's really hard to tell because when you look at the cap situation, it's a little difficult. The Jets really are not going to want to trade him prior to uh, that June 1st deadline. Post-June 1st, I believe it's like almost a $6 million cap hit. So you could take that into dead money a lot easier. But by then, most teams are already set up for what they're going to be doing for that year. So waiting on free agency or the NFL draft, you know, I'm not saying they're going to draft a quarterback because I think we're going to be drafting too late. But... You know, you never know with Joe Douglas. He's shown, uh, you know, in past off seasons that he, if he wants somebody, he's going to do his best to go get them. We watched a trade up for Jermaine Johnson the year before. uh, Before Elijah Vera Tucker, he traded up to go get. So we all know that Joe Douglas is not scared to go and get his kind of guy. And if he feels he's a quarterback away, and there's, you know, I hate to put it out there, hot take. If there's a can't miss prospect in this in this draft, you know he's got the capital. We have all of our picks. We got an extra pick in the Blake Cashman trade. Uh, you know, so it'll be really interesting to see. Do I think Zach's on this roster next year? I would say probably seventy percent yes, only because of the cap situation, because um, it makes it easier. And we all know Joe Douglas does not like to carry dead cap. I believe we were we were first in the league coming in this year in a good sense of not having you know, nearly any dead cap. And that's how Joe Douglas likes to operate. It provides flexibility, especially in the off season when they're going to be trying to finalize this team and potentially push, you know, to make a Super Bowl run next year. You know, I think there is a really good um, chance that 
going into training camp or going into the preseason next year, there'll be a team that's going to be quarterback hungry due to an injury. And, and, and um, Joe Douglas is not going to hesitate in trying to move Zach um, and, and get some sort of uh, uh, some sort of value for him. Cause right now there, there is no market for him. He's, he has played so poorly that there's no rational team out there right now that I think would, would even take a chance on him. Um, <clears throat> so with the loss on Thursday, we have some interesting uh, playoff scenarios. It seems like besides us losing uh, to Jacksonville, everything broke our way, which is just unbelievable. Um, I think the last I saw, if if the Jets win out, 538 has us at a 92% chance of of making the playoffs. But now with uh, Tua, um, quarterback of the Dolphins, now with him in concussion protocol, that kind of throws a wrench into a little bit of those scenarios. Now, we need the Patriots to lose. We Basically, the scenario is we need the Patriots to lose one more game and we need to win out. That's the only scenario where we get in. And the Patriots have the Dolphins coming up now, most likely without Tua. So can Teddy Bridgewater get the job done? Um, and then the last game of the season, they are playing Buffalo. Buffalo should still be playing their starters, I think, because they are going to be fighting for that number one seed with the Chiefs. Um. I believe the Chiefs have the Broncos next week. Double check that. I'm pretty sure the Chiefs are playing the Broncos. Let's see. Yup, they have the Broncos January 1st, 1 o'clock, and they're finishing off at the Raiders. So There's the Chiefs. That they went out. The Chiefs should. should run the Broncos into the ground. Let's let's be real here. It's the Broncos, which would mean, and I think the Bills are playing the Bengals. So we need, in a perfect scenario, we would need both of them to win so that Buffalo is still holding on to that number, or still playing for that number one seed going into because they do not have the tiebreaker against the Chiefs. So that's the scenario. We have to win out. We have to go into Seattle, take care of business. Then we need to go down to Miami and take care of business. I think it's much, much better of a chance of us winning both those games with, with Mike White. Yeah. Well, you nailed it right there. I, I think that, it's, you know, Bill Belichick screws this whenever he can. We all we all know that. But you know, playing against Miami, even with Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy Bridgewater is a very reliable backup. Um, that offense is still high power. They still have weapons all over the place. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, with the Bills, I fully expect the Bills to beat the Patriots that final week. And you know, I really think it's going to be in our own hands. And it all starts with this week coming up. You know, we, we could sit here and talk all we want. We, we haven't shown up, and uh, it's it's really going to depend on us just winning out. I think if we win out these next two games, I think we'll be there in the wild card round. Yeah, it's just really, it, it, it's kind of crazy that we're in the position that we're in, um, considering how many, how how much flux we've seen in, in the quarterback um, position. Uh, I mean, we were 5-2 and two at one point. And now we're we're seven and eight with with a combination of Mike White and and um, and Zach Wilson. So it's 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 crazy that we're even in this position. Everybody wanted to be competitive in in December, and uh, this is what it looks like. And um, I'm stressed out about it, <laughs> but I'm happy to be stressed out about it because I'm not I'm not already waiting for uh you know pitchers and catchers, you know the I'm not doing mock drafts in. Um, in October. So um I'm 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 happy but I'm also stressed at the situation. 
Yeah, without a doubt. So let's get into this week. You know, uh, we can, right, we, so we got yeah. the Seattle. We're in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Um, Both teams think, are seven and eight. I think we should sign IK in in, in whatever his name is, to a one day <laughs> contract. Have him go out there, take the coin toss, and, and then sit on the bench. <laughs> Yeah, well, if we look at it and we start breaking down the game, these teams are, you know, similar evenly matched, especially with mm-hmm. a guy like Mike White out there. And, you know, we could each go through our keys to the game, but I think it, you know, it's almost the same key to the game with us every time, every weekend and week out. Yeah. A, you know, a lot of, we, we keep talking about all this money that we spent on the defensive line. And I was going through my stats, you know, I always look up everything. Between John Franco Myers and Carl Lawson, they're making about twenty six and a half million dollars combined. Yep. JFM has four sacks this year, and probably a penalty that cost us the game a few weeks back. And he hasn't had a full sack in six weeks for crying out loud. Yep. Carl Lawson, one sack in the last four weeks and two sacks. In the last six weeks. Well, Carl Lawson's we going to be gone. Carl Lawson's going to be gone. Right, but at the end of the day, he's still making $15 million. He's a big key free agent that Joe Douglas brought in two off seasons ago. We can't just sit around and rely on Quinn and Williams. We had that I'm... stretch of games, those three games where we had 18 sacks. Yeah. And in the last four games, we have, you know, under, under six sacks. It's just not acceptable. And that's going to be the key, getting in Geno's face. You know, making him flustered. We've seen it here with the Jets, and I know a lot of people say it's a new Geno there, revenge of the Geno Smith. You know, we're not facing Trevor Lawrence again. It's Geno Smith. But how much How much of those sack numbers, um, due to the fact that the, the defense is, is, is playing, that the team's playing behind consistently? Like, I feel like if we had a lead in more of the games, the defense would be able to pin their ears back and be able to blitz more, be able to get more pressure. We can actually actually have our have our way with with the offense uh with with the opposing team's offense i think a lot of those sack numbers are tied into um being um behind a lot of games i i I really do i understand the numbers um and um you know quinnon is clearly not not healthy um you know he's got his shoulder is has to still be hurting him i mean the guy dislocated his shoulder a few weeks ago, popped it back in and went into the game. And now he he's got a calf. A strip sack last week. <laughs> Strips. I'm, uh, God, I thought um, after seeing that, I thought this, that's, you know, I thought we were going to win that game, you know, easily, but. <sighs> yeah. I think we also got to look at, uh, you know, Kenneth Walker last week, 107 yards rushing. We know that's what they're going to try to do early. Yep. You know, they're going to run the ball early. They're going to try to win it in the trenches. And then we can't, you know, one thing we can't pass up is these outside matchups. You're talking, you know, if Lockett plays, you know, you're going to have Metcalf out there. And one thing you and I were talking about prior to the show were those cornerback matchups. I think this might be the week where we finally see Sauce Gardner start maybe following Metcalf around the field a little bit. I think it's a really big mismatch read against Metcalf. Oh, You're talking yeah. at a corner that's about 5'8", yeah. 5'9", five, five, going up against a 6'2", six, 6'3", six, receiver that has really good jumping ability, is very strong. I want that lean, lanky corner on him with that length to match up against him. And I wouldn't be surprised to see if we if we consistently bring the uh, you know guy like Jordan Whitehead down in the box and leave our corners on an island a little bit this game. Yeah, we I I would really like to see Sauce follow a a, a receiver around instead of just taking one half of the field because I, j- not that Reed's not playing well. Reed's playing fantastic, but he is. He's 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 a short cornerback, which is which is really hard for, and especially against a, a guy like like DK Metcalf, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be very difficult for him. But on the other side of the ball, we should be able to run the ball on them. I think they're the 29th ranked Thir- rushing, 31st currently right now. 31st, 155 so, yards a game, 156 average. Our last three games allowed. Right. 
And like like you said before, it's the same keys of the game every week. We have to run the ball. It's that's it's just that simple. We cannot we cannot now I trust Mike White a hell of a lot more than I trust Zach Wilson. So if it ends up being a passing game, you know, I'm I'm I am feel much better about it, but we shouldn't have to. I, I really think like we're gonna run the ball down their throats. We we really we really need to. I think this might be a week where we fought where we see Conklin have his best game as a Jet. I really could see it. I could see that play action developing. Yeah, those rollout plays for Mike White, especially if Bam and Michael Carter out of the backfield too. <clears throat> yep, I could yep. see that. I could see. Uh, I wonder if Lafleur is going to go back to some of these trick plays that he's been trying to run. You know, they didn't work a few weeks ago. He really didn't try them much against Jacksonville. Nothing was working against them. They seem to be prepared for everything, but. It's going to be interesting to see how much they actually get our outside receivers involved. I think it's going to be run, run, and then play action to the tight end. No, I agree. I agree. I think the tight ends will have a have a big game. All right. Anything else before we uh, before we go? No, I, I you know I actually think the Jets are going to pull this out. I, I think uh, I see twenty four thirteen something around there. You know, I took I was right with my prediction a couple weeks ago with the Lions, almost nailed the score, but. Uh, I think we're going to pull this one out. I think uh, this offense is very motivated. We see this team rally behind Mike White in the past, and I don't expect anything else to change. I'm done giving score predictions. I can't anymore. <laughs> I can't. I'm trying to stay as positive as possible, so I'm just going to I'm going to sit down, I'm going to have a drink, and I'm going to watch the game and, and try and be as positive as possible. We should win this game, but it's always difficult to go up in Seattle and win, even with a Seattle team that's not – um, that's not as as high powered as as it. As they're still in it though, you know. They're Washington loses one game and they win. You know they have that seven seed. Washington seven seven and one. They're seven and eight. You know there's a lot, there's a lot that could happen. No, they have a lot to play for just as we do. Yep. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, if you're new here, please subscribe. Uh, if you've been here before, thanks for joining us. And uh, we will see everybody at the uh, halftime Twitter space and the post-game Twitter space on Sunday. Thank you.